What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large with my special guest, Mobile Instinct. Today we are in Locust Grove, Oklahoma, and right behind us is the remnants of what once was Camp Scott. This is the exact location where on June 13th, 1977, eight-year-old Lori Lee Farmer, nine-year-old Michelle Gouzet, and 10-year-old Denise Milner were brutally, brutally murdered right here in this exact location. And also out here to say some of these true crime YouTubers out here in these YouTube streets are getting more and more disrespectful with each and every single one of their videos. Let's get into it. So we're gonna have Mobile Instinct show us around this camp. Uh, he actually did a video a couple years ago and it got about 1.3 million views. He was the first and only person on YouTube to actually come out here. So he knows the layout fairly well. What was this right here? This was the main hall. This was, uh, um, whatever you would call, I mean, this is where they maybe would put plays on and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you can see the, uh, you know, the beautiful fireplace fireplaces, right there. Yeah. Um, there are, there's a couple pictures online that you can see how nice it was. I don't know when it burned sometime in the, uh, two thousands. This is the pool. The tithing board is still in the same spot as it was years ago. Wow. Now, the night of the murders, it was storming really, really bad. So, more than likely, they probably wouldn't have came here to go swimming because yeah. of the weather. And I don't know if they were returning um, Girl Scouts. I'm, I'm not sure if they had... Or if they were new. Yeah, so I don't... Make, they meant I mean, there was about, a, what, 140 altogether? It was, it was, it was quite, quite a... Large a camp, yeah, it was yeah. quite a large camp. And um, you could just... Think about all the memories that people have had visiting this camp before this horrible murder took place. Yeah. Wow. Remnants of the camp, maybe? So I was saying earlier in the video that you were the only one to do a video at this campground now. Possibly, I, 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 I didn't see anybody else. But. No. And at the time, when you uploaded your video, I was right down the hill. I was going to do a video here, but I didn't know how difficult it was to get out here. So I probably would not have been able to get to this video. Now, I normally don't like doing certain videos that other YouTubers have done just because I don't want to ride their coattails. Mm -hmm. So I considered this your video and I would have never asked you to take me up here because it just wasn't. That's not how I work. But I had to ask you because I'm on YouTube and I'm just looking up who's done this video. Now, of course, not anybody coming out here, but who talked about this video? And a certain true crime YouTuber, I will not say her name. I, you guys are going to probably know who I'm speaking about. But she uploaded a video about this uh, crime I want to say about eh, less than a month ago. And normally when you have the true crime YouTubers, you have, you know, they're, they're women and they pretty much all kind of talk about the same stories that each other talk about. I try to avoid that when I can. And so does Mobilistic. We don't really like doing stories unless we can get to the location. And so in the video, this, this lady, uh, she starts talking about this crime and in the video she says uh hello everybody you know she's all light-hearted and you know she's a very attractive woman has perfect teeth perfect hair perfect everything and she's very smiley which doesn't really fit the gloom of this video so she proceeds to get into that day's video she's talking about the murder of, at the camp sky right here where we're at right now and before she begins, hey, let's not forget ExpressVPN. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Uh, if, if your if your husband uh, if you catch your husband watching something he shouldn't watch, or 
you know, if you want to watch something without your wife knowing ExpressVPN, I honestly don't even know what a VPN is. So she does that. She shouts out her Patreon first, of course. And hey, listen, I got a Patreon. Mobile Instinct has a Patreon. We all have Patreons, you know what I mean? And that's not my gripe with this uh, true crime YouTuber who will remain nameless. But you probably will know who I'm speaking about momentarily. So in the same video that she's talking about the brutal rape and murder of three little girls, she starts asking her friends and her, uh, excuse me, her subscribers, her fans. She says, oh, hey, does anybody know of a really funny April Fool's joke? Because if you have, uh, leave a comment below. Ha, 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 ha. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, how, how just, uh, not rude, but I, I just thought it was very disheartening that three girls were, the, the, the last moments of their life were a brutal terror and pain. And this, this woman is like, oh yeah, let's talk about funny jokes on April Fool's Day. If anybody's played a prank on their family, leave a comment below so we can all laugh as you hear me talk about this brutal horrible murder uh, oh, okay. there it is. it's in front of us so this yeah this is it oh. this is the shower and the bathroom but we're in the middle of the campsite there were I believe eight tents they went around in a half circle and this is in the middle. So right around us right now, this is where the girls were sleeping in their tents right here. And you said that was the bathroom? They were on it. So how it worked was there was, a, there was a half circle. And so there was, I believe the counselors were in tent number one. The girls were in tent number eight. And it was the only tent that was blocked by the bathrooms. You could not see that tent. So they could see all the other ones. Except, except for the one. tent yeah. where the girls. Yeah. And so I don't know if that was planned specifically by the. By the bastard who did this. Yeah. And also there was a, what they thought was a hoax letter saying that. That happened like three months before. Or a couple yeah, months before, a couple months yeah. before someone left a letter. And I, I believe in the letter, it basically, I mean, I can't really quote it. I think it said, like, we are on a mission to kill three girls. Yeah. It was weird because it was it was one of the counselors' bunks. She came back. They were they were here early to do to kind of go over what they're going to do for the summer, their own like kind of counselor training. So when she came back to her bunk, they had donuts or something. There was like a little thing of donuts, and the donuts had been eaten or stolen or whatever. And there was a a letter in there, and that's what the letter was. And they kind of you know it was the seventies, and they kind of just thought it was thought a prank. maybe the prank or whatever. Yep. How eerie. Yeah. This is the actual campsite. Talk about creepy, right? So, of course, this was the bathroom. All right, so yeah, it might not have been showers. It was a while. Yeah, so it was just the bathroom, the outhouse. And then their tent would have been right here. Yeah, probably about 20 to 30 feet straight out. Maybe, give or take. Feet. And that night that they were murdered, it was a thunderstorm. So, if, if even Sound if they were screaming, the, exactly nobody would be able to hear them. Exactly. So I think this is the area where the girls' bodies were found. There's only really one photo, I think. And basically, some right in this trail. It was probably just a few hundred feet away from where their tent was. Found still in their suitcase. They were found still in the sleeping bag. What was this right here? I think this was the cook's cook's residence, um, where the cook stayed for the camp. I, I think so. Um, it was at the very end of the camp, so it, it's a little confusing when you start looking at the maps. But nothing special. I mean, a lot of these cabins, a lot of these buildings. They've, it's been so long they've come down, you know what I mean? It's been, what, 40, 46 years, something like that? 
I know that everybody, when it comes to YouTube and being a true crime YouTuber, whether you have 1,000 subscribers, you got 10 million subscribers, everybody has their own thing. You know, uh, some people go to cemeteries like me. Some people put on makeup as they talk about a crime that occurred. Some people, their sense of humor is a little bit cheeky. Um, you're not, you don't really consider yourself a true crime YouTuber, but you do do true crime and you were mm -hmm. doing true crime videos before I was, before I even had this channel. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while, a few years. Plus, yeah. Like yeah. Five years, something like that. And this video wasn't necessarily made to like defame or talk, you know, just junk about a particular somebody. But it is, you know, kind of want to bring a little bit of light to the fact that, uh, you know, you can be tongue in cheek, you can be funny, and Lord knows I have my place for that. But when it comes to these certain murder videos, particularly ones involving kids, I think it's not a subject or a matter to take lightly. And uh, yeah, it just kind of irked me a little bit where I wanted to show what actually happened out here and you know these three girls they were brutally savagely murdered and uh, you maybe you have certain people on youtube who are so jaded about the constant horrific stories they read maybe they just don't care anymore but uh, anyways we're gonna make our way out of here uh i'm gonna go visit the, the graves of two of the three girls uh, that were murdered here and uh, we also want to leave now because you said that you smelled somebody smoking a cigar. Definitely somebody was smoking a cigar and somewhere. Yeah, we didn't th see anybody. This but... is not a place that you you want to be hanging out at no. too, too long so we're going to get out of here. Now we are at the Green Acres Memorial Garden Cemetery here in Sperry, Oklahoma. My buddy Mobile Instinct had to take off he had some videos to go cover, but please subscribe to his channel. If it was not for him, I would not be able to get to Camp Scott to show you the location of where these girls were brutally murdered. So let's talk a little bit about the sick son of a bitch bastard who was responsible for this crime. And that creep demon's name is Gene Leroy or Leroy Hart. Who cares how to pronounce his name though? Hopefully he's burning in hell. So let's talk a little bit about this demon. He was originally born in Oklahoma and in high school, he was actually well known in his community because he was a very good football player. He was a pretty decent athlete. Now he could have had a future playing football for Oklahoma State, who knows? But he had other plans sick deviant plants so in 1966 he was arrested for kidnapping two women outside of a nightclub in Tulsa he took them to a wooded area and beat them up raped them covered them in leaves maybe the women played dead and he just left them and that was it he was arrested for that crime. He was sentenced to 300 years in prison. Don't ask me why, but he was paroled in two and a half years. I, I don't understand that. Maybe I'm getting my facts wrong. So he gets out of prison. So you think that such a deviant, disgusting crime that you're gonna be able to like fly right. No, this guy is a sexual deviant. He's a creep. He gets out and He's burglarizing homes around his area. So he violates his probation, parole. He gets locked up at the Mays County Jail. And in 1973, he escapes prison. Now, normally nowadays, when you escape prison or jail, you're immediately caught, but we don't have social media back in those days. So this guy, with the help of his scumbag family and his community, he is able to stay on the run for four years, hiding in people's houses, hiding in the woods, hiding in caves. So this guy was linked to this crime because after this murder occurred, you know, you got the police 
You got three dead little girls. You got the police going around interviewing people at the campsite. Did you hear anything? Did you see anything? Anything out of the ordinary? Okay, well, one person says, oh, yeah, I heard weird, like, sounds that sounded like it came from an animal, like, kind of just moaning weird sounds. Uh, somebody said, one of the girls in another tent said that around maybe 3 o'clock in the morning, they seen a man with a flashlight shining a light in her face. And then he left and it went on. Eventually, they found a cave that this bastard was hiding in. And some of the items that they found in the cave were tied to the scene of the crime. First of all, you had duct tape that was very similar to the duct tape used that was found at the crime. Number two, you had rope with a very similar knot that was used in the crime that was found in the cave. You had newspaper that was found balled up in the flashlight. Perhaps the newspaper was put in the flashlight to, you know, maybe the batteries were loose or something along those lines. And then you had a couple of pictures of women that were employees of the same prison where Gene Leroy Hart was incarcerated at. And when he was in the prison, he was in their, their photography program. So he probably stole those pictures and kept them. So that's with all those clues, that's what led them to suspect him in the crime. And that's when the manhunt for Gene Hart really reached a crescendo. So eventually they captured him, arrested him, and tried them tried him for the murders of these girls. Now 1977, 1978, 1979, the 70s, we don't really have uh, DNA technology. And I don't know why the jury, maybe, who knows what they were thinking, but they found him not guilty of that crime. Maybe they were thinking, oh, hell, we would be responsible for the life of a man and he's already facing that 300 year sentence for that rape back in 1966. So uh, let's just say he's not guilty. He's already gonna go up the river anyways, who cares? That's probably what they were thinking. So in 1979, he was found not guilty and he was sent back to prison for the other crime, for the other two rapes. And on June 4th, 1979, while he was exercising, uh, he dropped dead of a heart attack. God, I wish he would have dropped dead of a heart attack sooner. This is the grave of one of the victims. This is Doris Denise Milner. All right, we got one more stop before we conclude the video. But we're gonna go a little far further down south. When it comes to true crime and YouTube, many people out there have their own individual style. Some of them put on makeup. Some of them eat a lot of food. Some of them tease their hair up and look cute some of them act in a tongue-in-cheek funny fashion believe you me we all have our style of how we present our videos this is the Memorial Park Cemetery here in Tulsa Oklahoma 
This is the final resting place of one eight-year-old Lori Lee Farmer. A little girl with hopes, dreams, aspirations of being whatever it is that she wanted to be. And that was taken away from her by a sick and twisted demon. And this is all that remains of her memory. To see the Snoopy doll, a character that was popular at that time, shows you how long ago this murder occurred. Who even thinks about Snoopy anymore? But she loved Snoopy. I don't know what she wanted to be when she grew up. Maybe she wanted to be a nurse. Maybe she wanted to be a policeman or firefighter, a surgeon, who knows? Regardless of what she wanted to be, eight years old, a defenseless baby, along with Denise, and Michelle. And like I said just a second ago, true crime YouTubers, we all have our own style of presenting our videos. Some of us heavy edit, some of us don't. This isn't a gotcha video, and I'm not trying to call out names. What I am saying is this. When I speak about a crime that was committed, since I'm not the best storyteller, my videos are not heavily edited, the only thing I have over others is that I go to the scene of the crime and I go to the grave to let you know that whatever YouTube person you watch, beyond the makeup, beyond the teased up hair, beyond the stupid dumb jokes, them trying to make it that they're cool. There's a victim in the story. The victim was just as alive as I am now speaking and you are listening. Maybe I'm reaching in this, I don't know, but I want to say it's really different when you're reading up about so many crimes you can get quite jaded. Oh, another murder child. Oh, another murder child. Oh, okay. Asking your subscribers, oh, hey, tell me about a cool April Fool's prank video or joke that you did. Hey. In my opinion, and yeah, hey, am I reaching a little bit? But my personal opinion, I'm not reaching enough because I've noticed in that sector of YouTube, things have gotten a little bit dicey. I don't have a big platform, but somebody needs to call them out. Maybe that person's gonna be me. Who knows what the future will hold, but let me just say this. Three, gir three girls were murdered. And I'm not into the bubbly, cutesy personality. I'm not into being asked about jokes. This is not a joking matter. Use a little bit more tact is all I say. A little bit more tact. Yeah, I'm talking to you. So what? Snoopy. Do kids her age even know who Snoopy is anymore? She should be alive today with grandchildren.
looking forward to finally retiring from that job that she always complains about going up going to every day waking up but deep down inside she loves because her friends work with her and she has developed friendships with her co-workers throughout the years and they should be gossiping my husband did this my kids are, are, are a nightmare or a terror whatever All the editing in the world will never bring you to where I am right now. Snoopy. All right, guys. I'm Lamont at large. Unsubscribe if you must. It's all good. We live in an uncivil time anyways, where two people cannot have a difference of opinion without the other being canceled. I will catch up with you on the next vlog. You'll see me. You'll see me. As God lets me draw every breath, I'll be out here living in my trailer, traveling around, trying to find stories of people that are no longer here. That grave right there across that young man, he died in World War II. I think he was only 21, 22 years old. Rest in peace to all. Catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace.